Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Adriana and this is my daughter, one of my daughters. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my gentle parenting and how I'm being an intentional parent. So make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel and show me some love in the comments. So let's get into it. Just in case you hear my daughter, she's right here down with me. Um, so just in case you're like, where do I hear a baby? You do. And my son is laying on the couch. My daughter is taking a nap. I'm sitting in my daughter's play area because this is the best lighting and most convenient for me to do this video. <laughs> so now that that's out the way, let me just first say that gentle parenting is definitely something that's becoming way more popular. And that does so much stuff for my soul because just like affirmations and things like that, we didn't have that when I was growing up and everybody before so gentle parenting of course is just a different way of parenting a lot of people look at different uh, gentle parenting differently a lot of people have a negative outlook on gentle parenting because they just think that you're gentle and that your kids get away with everything and that's not the case I say that there's a lot of good podcasts out there there's books out there that you can read about gentle parenting understanding you know childhood development how their brains work what your body language means to them so you don't always have to use words to be distant or create trauma so that's kind of like what I've done over time I already kind of knew within my spirit like I don't want to spank my kids I feel like there has to be another way they don't listen to me you know they do something wrong like why is it that physical um abuse or hitting them would be like my resolve I don't think that's good but of course I was in religion, of course, and they always would throw, spoil the rod, you know, spo you spare the rod, you spoil the child. So I always felt obligated, but felt like crap inside once I did it, especially when I would see how my children or my son mainly was the one, unfortunately, that would get it because he was, he was, yeah, he's older. My daughter, like, as soon as I kind of got into gentle parenting, like, she wouldn't have been old enough to really pop or spank or do any of that. So I made it a priority to understand what style that was because at first I didn't know it was considered gentle parenting it very much was like I just don't want to speak my kids I want to you know be there for them I want it to be their safe space I want them to feel like they can come to me for everything and some things I was like okay well what did I think I wanted and what would have been good for me at my age so there's a lot of different factors that play into the role of how you gentle parent so now I'm going to kind of get into certain things that I do when it comes to gentle parenting or conscious parenting or intentional parenting. So one of the very first things that I think is beneficial and has helped me is understanding that all my children are different. So I can be a really good gentle parent or intentional parent if I try to parent my children like they're the same person just because they're all going to be all going to be two or they've all been babies. They're completely different. Um, they have different personalities. They have different temperaments. You know, they were born on different days and I'm into astrology, numerology, a lot of that stuff that, you know, are, is predictive, but very true about how they show up in the world. And I'll give you an example, like my daughter, um, my two-year-old, she is a lot different than my son. They have a different birthday, of course, clearly, and then I have twins. But my daughter, she is very spicy. She's a Sagittarius, but her moon, which has to do with her, emotion, her emotions, and we're in astrology right now, is like she'll be very spicy, um, but then really quickly she'll flip and be very emotional because she has cancer emotions, which means she's very emotional. So because she's that way, I can't treat her the same or do the same thing that I would with my son because he um, is a Pisces, which means he's already mad. He's automatically more emotional because he's a water sign, just like Cancer is a water sign. And then he has other water signs. So he may be a little bit more emotional where my daughter has some spice and emotion. He could just be straight water. So I'm kind of not going into astrology, but for those of you who know a little bit of astrology will be able to understand. Then of course you have different things like their Venus and how they have to be loved and in their Mars, how they do stuff, you know, so there's different things that allow me to understand them on a different level. Of course, you're like, oh my goodness, well, this kid's like this and this kid's like that. I don't understand what's going on. Um, you know, my daughter also, I thought she would be, I would say kind of sense easier, like laid back because I was the second born, a girl too, just like she was. And she 
is on a different level than I was. So I look at her a lot different um, than I would myself. So try not to compare is a big thing. So understanding them for who they are, understanding that they're that they're their own individual person and learning how to tend to those needs from like, you know, how I, I say discipline them or correct them, you know, how I spend time with them. All of that is going to be way different because sometimes they may need different stuff. So because they're different, it is a lot of work at first, but I realized I'd rather put in the work now than having to have to kind of shuffle and struggle as they get older. And I feel like being more attentive to their own individual personalities, traits, and things that they need will probably cut down the trauma and things feeling abandoned, neglected, and emotionally detached and all of that. Um, you know, if I work on it now, and of course, half the time, you know, little kids don't understand that, but it's beneficial for me because I can help them through like the mood swings or feeling a certain type of way because I will understand why they're doing it. They may not be able to do it. So the first point basically condensed is I look at them as their own individual person, people and then I help them basically understand themselves. And like I said, my daughter's too. She probably won't. My son, he's becoming way more aware. And of course, my twins, they're just way too young, but it gives me an understanding and a whole outlook on their life so I can better set themselves up and help them be able to show up in the world as their true genuine authentic self so the second thing also is just kind of overall is understanding certain expectations that i should have of a, as a mom it's very easy that we can have unrealistic expectations especially now in the world of social media where people you know have these genius children or these kids who are doing you know incredible things that we kind of get jealous or want to be like I want my daughter to do that or I want my son to do that you know I want this college calling my son at four years old and you're like what you know that's kind of extreme but you get what I mean so even for example like my two-year-old she does not eat all her food she's a toddler but I have that expectation that she's going to wait and Instead of being frustrated with her and saying you're wasting food or you eat all the time, get yourself together. You know, I don't want to keep making you snacks. You're greedy. I am just like, okay, she's not going to eat everything in one setting. She's going to want several snacks. So because I know that, I have the right perspective, the right point of view, and that I can prepare myself for the day by making sure she has her snacks, her meals are together, and that's way less stressful. My son same thing with him being nine he's at that interesting phase where he's kind of like too cool don't want to hang out with mommy kind of thing but then son kind of does on the low ski uh and then you know he's kind of at that like i want to do what i want to do phase but had i not known that i would have been like you are only nine years old i don't know who the heck you think you're talking to but because i've taken the time to learn him and know him and understand his mind i understand like okay this is that age where he just needs a little bit more connection and you know he needs to be understood he's trying to figure out his identity and of course he is dealing with like the co-parenting situation so because I have the right perspective it helps me be able to show up for him instead of reacting to that behavior now again like I said gentle parenting is not letting him off the hook because when he wants to act like that and say you know I, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do like hey come sit over in this chair and he goes and sits four chairs down that is a conversation that we have but it's always connecting and then correcting and figuring out what the bigger issue is so I think that's super important and having that expectation that because he's going between two different homes a parent that gentle parents and one who doesn't and does other stuff you know I have to be able to be receptive to that because you know I can't control that household or do anything there and he's kind of going back and forth so having the right understanding of how that goes understanding child development understanding where things click in people's minds because a lot of people mature and grow up in different areas at different times and so it makes it a lot easier to understand like okay he's he's not as mature or he needs this you know it just makes it a lot better and it allows me to stay sane because it's like I can see it coming and I can address it a lot better having the right perspective than like oh my goodness what is he doing like or why did why is she like that I understand that and even for like 
children under five, your brain isn't fully developed. So I can't expect my daughter to even connect with the fact of wasting food. You know, what does that mean? What are you talking about food? She doesn't even get the concept of money. She doesn't understand any of that. She doesn't understand, you know, patience. She doesn't understand, you know, a lot of things. And even that's one thing we're working on now when she wants to eat or want something, she's like, I want this now. We're like, okay, well, let's use manners, number one. And number two, you know, what skill do we have to develop right now? And that is patience. Mommy or daddy has told you to wait. I know you don't understand time, but we're going to teach you by showing you, okay, it. we're going to, look. let's go look at the timer or, or let's set a timer when this goes off, then this is going to be ready. So it's just about working with what you have instead of just saying whatever. So that is the second point is just having the right perspective and understanding of your child, like where they are and as they continue to grow. Okay, so this is the third thing. And this is something that I kind of touched on previously. And that was, you know, understanding with basically what each child needs and what what skills and what skills they need to, to develop because you know a lot of times the reason that there's misbehavior or things are not done a certain type of way is that they're lacking something that needs to be taught but at the same time as we as parents are teaching our children sometimes we forget that we're not modeling what we're teaching and then our children are modeling what we're doing so my daughter she may say i want this or mommy this and it's more demanding than asking but that's because me and her dad we go back and forth between each other like saying hey can you grab me that or you know there's not always a please to it we're not being disrespectful but she's seeing that we're not using our manners or saying please and thank you between each other all the time where we may not think it's a necessary we have to remember that there's still a younger person younger people watching what we do so I think that's super, super important. And even like with my son, with him, he likes to kind of interrupt. So he has to learn patience in a different way or he has to learn how to problem solve by himself because sometimes the interruptions are not necessarily needed. Um, sometimes there is, you know, um, taking the time to brainstorm because sometimes you're like, okay, well, that could have been resolved. Sometimes it's, um, I don't know, it could just be, a lot of different things so it's all about learning what skill your child needs to help you be able to teach them okay well you know time is very important in our reality unfortunately but you know kids don't come up learning that my son is now in fourth grade and he just has gotten the concept of time so you know it's like what skill do i need to teach them at this time you know how can they you know improve on that skill how long is it going to take it could take some time just like learning how to ride a bike it's going to take some time so learning what your child needs to develop will make things a lot better instead of looking at you're being disrespectful you're being rude you're being you know impatient yes because they need to learn those skills they need to learn how to be respectful they need to learn what respect is just because you say the word respect it doesn't always signal something in their mind like oh yeah because you said the word respect i now have a full definition and understanding of what that is so just make sure you understand that they're going to need some help developing those skills but then in addition to that you also have to be exemplifying that for them so they can actually do what you're doing and not just do what you're saying this is probably like one of my favorite things even though it is not always convenient even with the babies because they're twins i like to take time out with each of them now unfortunately i would say like my son he lives with his dad now more than not so he comes every two weekends or every uh, every other weekend for just a couple days so my time is a little bit smaller with him but i think it's super important and helpful to spend time with him ask him questions get in his mind because i think that sometimes there's a lot of stuff that kids hold in because they don't feel safe and i always tell my son you can always tell me something i will not judge you can even ask me questions maybe about your dad because his parenting style is different it's more closed which leaves him having a lot of questions so I always say like hey let's talk what do you like what don't you like what does mommy do what does mommy what can mommy do more of and that helps me become a better parent for them instead of just you know disregarding like at nine there's possibly nothing he needs I'm a perfect parent no I try to open that avenue up where he can talk to me and feel safe and he even has asked me you know don't tell my dad this or you know don't share this with the other parent because he he wants to be able to confide in me so I think it's really important to spend time with each one of your children and of course my daughter 
her being two, it's a lot different. She just needs affection. She just needs to have my attention because she's with me with the twins, you know, all the time. So she needs to feel important. So with her, I recently started doing this thing where I said, let's go on a bye bye trip. You know, and we'll go up the street to the grocery store or we'll go to the Dollar Tree. And it's very short, but that's me and her's time. So, you know, or we'll do a nighttime routine where we do our affirmations and we do a song and I put her to bed. But that is our time. And of course, when my son is around, when I have them together, I will group them together as well so that it doesn't have to be that everybody's divided. Um, so for example, I do these affirmations and when it's just my daughter here, it's tailored to just her. When he's here, I tailor it to fit both of them. So with my son, when he's here, when his sister's in bed, my husband has the, the babies, I will you know, talk to him for a little bit. And it's so funny because he tries to get like two weeks worth of stuff in one in one discussion <laughs> um so you know and I sometimes allow him to lead not every time does he want to talk and sometimes it's like he wants to talk right before bed or he will talk like right on his way out to his dad's house so it's just providing that opportunity for him to you know want to share with me because of course he's my son and I care and I don't want him to feel like I don't because he's not here um, at all so I think it's very important to be intentional with my conversations with him um, just really quickly, the reason he was there and with his dad is because, you know, he was inquiring to spend more time with his dad. And of course, how life goes sometimes and with people's schedules, it just made way more sense for him to move with him than to kind of go back and forth and be here two days and back four days. It just was too, too crazy. So he absolutely needs to be with his dad in that way because he's just told me, I have questions and my dad said not to ask you. I'm like, I didn't want to have to, you know, deal with certain things. And plus as a man, I feel like if your father is willing to be a part of your life, then yes, allow them to be a part of their life and you know teach them how to be a man because I'm not a man I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a man and my husband he agrees like if his dad is there he should be the one definitely like teaching him and showing him different things and of course he just has a bonus dad to help him when he's here as well so I think that's super important and then with my twins they were you know in the NICU so my son I once he was born two days as you guys probably know I he his stomach perforated so I couldn't hold them or see them for 40 hours after I had my um, C-section. It was supposed to be 24 hours, but I had to go to the SICU. And then two days after he was born, his stomach perforated and I wasn't able to hold him for a week or so because he had all this stuff coming out of him and they wanted to keep him very still and sedated because he had a, um, to have a stomach surgery. So now um, he needs a, like a lot of cuddling and touching. So I make sure he gets his own time right now. Same thing for my daughter. She also was in the NICU and, you know, separate from her brother. So I make sure that they both get that loving and stuff that they need. So, you know, I'm just super intentional with that time. And I think it's going to benefit them and everybody, you know, I want my kids to always feel like they can speak up. I feel like the more open you are with your children, the better relationship that you have and the most likely they will sneak around and do things that could put them in jeopardy. Um, and you just have to like find out by a phone call or something like that. So I'm very, very intentional with my time. It's not an everyday thing, of course. It's definitely at least once a week. I'm hoping that I can be even more intentional with it because you know, I think it will be beneficial, but I'm doing the very best that I can. Um, so I think that wraps up this video. I was trying to make five, but I can't really think of another fifth thing. I think I kind of tied some of them together, but this is what I've done. I, and people ask me, I'll say this part, people ask me all the time, like, you know, again, what makes you go into gentle parenting? And like I said, it just was something that welled up within me that said, you know, there has to be another way, like hitting because they did something wrong is not it. And, you know, people say like, do you think you'll be able to gentle parent like long-term? Like when I was pregnant with, the twins they're like do you think you can gentle parent when you have three kids at home under three and I'm like yeah it's a commitment that I have just because I, you know they trigger me in a sense or my daughter has rough days and she's super emotional I'm committed to allowing them to have a better life and childhood than I did because I see as an adult the repercussions and I'm like you don't want to be 31 32 34, 40, 50, trying to heal from your childhood trauma because then, you know, your life is basically over. And I'm just kidding. It's not like, it's not over, but it's so much more beneficial when you can get it sooner in life. So even with my daughter, you know, I just try to make sure she can get 
affirmations in and things of that nature because kids are rude like in your know, in school and in life but if she's so secure in herself that if things do happen even if I slip in something happens with me and I'm having a rough day and I kind of am distant she won't have to question if she's worthy because I'm teaching her that she's worthy and she'll be like you know what mommy's just probably having a rough day because I know I'm worthy I know I'm enough I know I'm this and I'm that so you know she'll learn to be gracious and loving and understanding and still truly learn to love herself and same thing with my son I tell him to write his affirmations you know say them out loud I introduce him to some songs that have affirmations so repeat them in his mind and tell him you know download an app that does affirmations and stop being on your game all the time so that you can know who you truly are and show up for yourself when um you know I'm not around to say hey buddy you're this and you're that when you're at school you know those types of things so I promise I'm done now you guys <laughs> because my daughter is getting squirmy so we're gonna end the video but I thank you so much for staying to the end if you did and make sure that you go ahead and like subscribe and I will see you in the next video ta-ta